everybody. This is Mark Cody, uh, working specialized bikes, aerodynamics here. Show off the wind tunnel quite a bit over the last several months, but I just wanted to give you a quick idea of how this place works uh, now that we have, uh, we've been running quite a bit. Now, wind tunnel is basically made up of a couple different things. Obviously, we want to make wind, so we have fans in the back. There's six six foot uh, vane axial fans back there. These are each about 75 horsepower piece. So we have about 450 horsepower pulling airflow through this fan at full speed. Right now we're running at about 45% of our fan speed. Uh, that gives us wind right here where I'm standing of almost 50 kilometers an hour. And that's really not pulling too much energy. It's about 100 kilowatts. So not too, too bad in terms of the overall energy drop. Now, what we have going through the inside of this test section is very clean airflow. Ahead of the camera that you can see, we have flow straighteners and a big uh, screen door, effectively, that sifts out the airflow, and then it gets funneled up this, through this big funnel before it reaches me in the test section. That gives us nice, clean, very straight airflow. If we want to mess it up afterwards to make it more like the real world, then we can put multiple riders in front, we can put some bushes and shrubs out there so we can simulate what's going out in the real world. Otherwise, we want it to be very, very clean airflow. Now, our test section is very big. That's because of all the things I just said. If we wanted to look at multiple riders, we could put a rider in front of this balance that's measuring the drag and actually look at some drafting effects. In this case right now, we just have a wheel. And this wheel is strapped to, like I said, the balance, which, uh, for lack of a better terminology, is like a fancy bathroom scale. Uh, except we have precision, just like a bathroom scale, you'd be measuring gravity. We have the precision kind of like your kitchen scale. So I stand on my bathroom scale, it measures my drag, uh, but I need to be able to measure basically the sensitivity of a paper clip. Same thing here. So right now, what you see on your screen, at the center of the top, you see a coefficient of drag. That's effectively the coefficient of drag force times the frontal area of this wheel on this apparatus. 0 0.016, 0 0.017, something like that. Now, when I stand on this table though, you'll start to see both at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a drag graph increasing. Uh, you'll see that number peak out like crazy. And that's because the force of me out here is way bigger than just that, that wheel. Now, as I start to reduce my frontal area, I can feel it, I'll tell you that right now. I get into a more aerodynamic position. That drag is gonna start to come down and we'll see it start to come down here. Now, it's very, very sensitive. If I stay very stable like this, the drag graph will start to stabilize. My numbers will start to stabilize. And we could run a test like this if I was on a bike, take a 30 second average, see what my drag coefficient is. But like I said, very sensitive. If I move my arm out, you're gonna see that drag increase. If I get into a very low tuck, and I'm just looking over at the screen over my shoulder here, you can see that drag drop quite a bit. And like I said, we'll start to stabilize. If I put my hand out at all, you're gonna see that start to peak up a little bit. Yeah, you can see that drag increase. And then I get back into an arrow tuck and it drops back down. Now, it's fairly hard to measure air because it is moving so much. I mean, you can see with my shirt, it's shaking around. You can see when I'm standing on this balance, a lot's going on. Now, as I get off this balance, there's no direction from anything else around. So that everything, everything drops back down to about zero, then it's gonna stabilize back to the drag of the wheel. Now this is circular, so we can rotate the wheel, rotate the bicycle, the rider, whatever it may be, into a crosswind and simulate everything out on the road that you experience out there. So that's just kind of a little bit about what goes on in the wind tunnel. And uh, I hope to show you a lot more in here in the near future. Thanks so much.